Hello and good morning. Can I ask you all a question? How good was Doom 3? It's been 20 years exactly since it's been released and does it still hold up today? Well in my opinion, yeah it does. Doom 3 is considered the black sheep of the franchise. But if the black sheep has these sort of ratings here, it's safe to say that the series itself is doing quite well. So without further ado, let's talk about Doom 3. This isn't some kind of video essay, analysis, whatever the fuck. Um, this is just me talking about how much I love Doom 3. Spoilers ahead. Doom 3 came out on August the 3rd, 2004. Now 2004 was a great year for gaming. We had Half-Life 2, Halo 2, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. I could seriously go on. But a new Doom game, it was and still is a big deal. Doom 1 and 2 were commercial successes, believe it or not. The last Doom game that came out at the time was Doom 64, a more graphically revamped entry to the franchise with a creepy tone to it. Though the gameplay retained its fast paced momentum, only issue was it was only available for the Nintendo 64. Now today, it's on any modern console. As good as that game was, people only had those three Doom games to go with. I forgot to mention Final Doom, but yeah, four games. Anyway, and that is until the day that Doom 3 came out, and well, let's take a look at it. Doom 3 runs on the id Tech 4 engine, which for the time looked amazing. It forced a lot of gamers to install better hardware into their PCs. I would say that graphically it was tied with Half-Life 2 with having the best graphics for 2004. The only other games that have used this engine are Quake 4, Prey, Wolfenstein, Quake Wars and Brink. What also came with this engine is the best lightning effects I've seen in a video game. I wish that today's games could put more effort and creativity into lighting. The sound design is also spot on. I love it when hell invades, you can hear the distant sounds of gunfire and the demons wrecking shit up. One mechanic which heightened up the horror was the fact that you can't use a flashlight and a gun at the same time. Though you can smack demons in the head with it, the flashlight isn't all that useful but you will come across sequences where an NPC or an object will light your way and you can have your preferred gun out. Now with that mechanic, it was on paper that there would be a mounted flashlight on you, but that would have stressed the game's engine. But that was later added to the BFG edition of the game. Oh yeah, fun fact, so there's a uh, mod that came out on the same day as the game did, called the duct tape mod, which is where you can have your flashlight and your gun out at the same time. Speaking of guns, your friends are back. The shotgun, chain gun, plasma rifle, and the BFG. Now, I know a lot of people hate the shotgun here, due to its massive spread and inconsistent damage output. But I actually don't mind it. If you learn the shotgun dance with enemies, you can easily send them back to hell. You can even one-shot a revenant if you're lucky enough. Plus, ammo for it is all over the place. If you run out of ammo for it, I would be surprised. That's another thing. Ammo and armor are all over the place. The armor is weird even though it absorbs some of the damage. Your health will take most of it. Plus, ammo is everywhere. Other than certain guns, you'll be completely stocked with ammo consistently. Now in the Xbox port of Doom 3, it plays more of like a survival horror with very limited ammo and resources, depending on what difficulty you choose. But also because in the Xbox version, they had to cut down some of the levels to make it more compatible. Okay, you're all set. Hey! The scientist, right? I'm not sure you want to find him. You see, uh, uh, never mind. Armor actually works how it would normally, and there are moments where I had no ammo and I had to smack demons with the flashlight. The Xbox version doesn't fuck around. Now, on the BFG version, on the other hand, I am personally not a big fan of it. It does come with Doom 1 and 2, a new episode for Doom 2 entitled No Rest for the Living and also new levels for Doom 3, known as The Lost Mission. Now, it's nice and all, but they made the game brighter, make ammo more plentiful for some, for some reason, <laughs> and replaced the flashlight with a shoulder-mounted one, which really reduced the stakes of the game. <laughs> I recommend playing the original Doom 3 on PC, but if you have an original Xbox and want to seek out a copy of Doom 3, you can't go wrong with that either. But there are other means to play the OG version of Xbox if you know where to look. 
Now this game is considered a horror game, which is correct for the first half of the game. But after you've been to hell and acquired the Soul Cube, the game plays like the original Doom games. But before I talk about that, let's start at the beginning. Doom 3 begins with the most badass menu theme I've ever heard. Now once you're done jamming out to those riffs, pick the veteran difficulty and hit play. Read all that and go do your job. Hit control, alt, and the button next to one. I don't know what that is. And type in give all then kill this guy on Stills PDA. Read it and feel guilty, now restart the game and play it how it was intended. So the PDA mechanic was new for Doom. I love reading about the lore of the game and discovering codes to lockers and rooms. Some of them give you really useful items. Other times, they kinda suck. Like you're running around looking for a medikit but you only get ammo or armor. Anyway, you can interact with NPCs all around Mars City and snoop around what you can call home for now. Head to see your friendly sergeant and he'll give you your first ever mission. I've programmed this sentry to guide you to the maintenance elevator. I hope you follow the sentry better than you've followed orders so far. Once you're there, you'll now get your service pistol and a flashlight. Locate the scientists and watch hell invade Mars. The game kicks in and you've got to get out of there. You'll encounter baddies, really creepy scenes and watch as hell slowly takes over Mars. In typical Doom fashion, it's up to you to stop the demons and send them back to hell. Now from the first moment till the first boss fight, this game proved itself to be a worthy entry of the franchise. You'll be introduced to more enemies, mechanics and guns as you progress your way through and the game doesn't throw everything at you all at once. You'll stumble upon more PDAs and survivors and get their perspective on the hell invasion. Uh, oh yeah, that's another thing. There are no more secrets per se, but if you're more aware of your surroundings, you can find hidden rooms or switches that will reveal some goodies. That being said, when you finish the level, you won't have a scoreboard that displays your kills or the secrets you found. One awesome new mechanic is the ability to shoot incoming projectiles from enemies other than the ones that use guns. You can shoot out fireballs, rockets, and any other projectile that comes your way. The demons have gotten a modern facelift. I won't lie when they say they're much creepier. Hell, the pinky scared the crap out of young me. You've got new enemies like the commandos and the triads. What well, fucking pricks, I should add but at the cost of enemies like Arachnotrons and Pain Elementals. Thank Christ. The last mechanic I like to mention is that this game is more vertical now. Away are the days of OG Doom's lack of jumping or crouching. Despite the game being more claustrophobic with its level designs, you can dodge projectiles by ducking underneath now, or by shooting it out as I mentioned before. There are other mechanics new to Doom like sprinting, reloading, zooming in, plus some more that I can think of right now. Now after exiting the Alpha Labs and defeating the first boss, the main objective now is to send out the transmission to get reinforcements on Mars. But you have someone else who's like, no bro, don't do it please. Either way, you will get berated. It doesn't really change the ending anyway whatsoever. Now after that, you make your way to the Delta Labs and my god, these levels are fucking fantastic. Teleporting is back. The only downside is that it scares the fucking daylights out of you. You can see now how it was slowly taken over Mars with its fleshy architecture and the blood of your friends standing the walls. Now, you're on the fourth level of the Delta Labs. The Xbox version of this level is much creepier. As you can see, like, the fucking visions of the chainsaw blokes all over the place. Now you kill the Bruiser Brothers and get sucked into hell. Now only consisting of one level, but split into two or maybe three levels in the Xbox version, I don't remember. But already making an impressive introduction, this is already an amazing depiction of hell. The souls screaming in agony, the lakes of fire, no hope in sight. You need to get out of here. This level will turn an atheist into a Christian. You can find a BFG hidden here and cheese the boss fight at the end. Now you got the Soul Cube! Yay! Now, as much as I love this game, I gotta address a few things. The boss fights are easy when you have the right equipment. 
for example, the first boss fight, your strongest gun would be like the chainsaw or the plasma gun. With the other two, not including the last one, you have access to the BFG or the Soul Cube. Doom 3 lacks power-ups. No more invulnerability, no invisibility, mega spheres, along many other power-ups. Though there are berserks, they can only be found in two levels. The berserk power-up distorts your vision and you're in a blind rage and a single punch can kill even a hell knight. And annoyances I have is when your screen shakes when you're being hit by enemies. One isn't too bad, I can deal with it. But when you're surrounded and all you can see is a mixture of red and black blurs, you're fucked. Some enemy attacks are unavoidable, but I'll say that that's an error on my part. For the longest time, I thought I could never avoid the zombie commandos. But if you duck at the right time, you dodge his big ass tentacle. That's all I have to complain about, so the rest of this video will be me gushing over the game. Once you're out of hell, you're back on Mars with no weapons except for your trusty soul cube. Oh, and your fists as well. You have the task of sealing the gates of hell forever. The survival of the human race is in your hands, and with that in mind, you do what it takes to save Earth and kill every demon you encounter. In Doom 3, there are new weapons in this series. You got a machine gun, a hand grenade, which are both cool. But the Soul Cube is great for emergencies when you have low health and you're up against a Hell Knight or something with the same threat level. You use the Soul Cube to replenish all your health. If you use it on a spider or something, you'll get like, I don't know, 25% of your health back. There are more fodder-like enemies placed in these later levels, so you can fill your Soul Cube before you can use it. You need 5 kills before the Soul Cube can be used. Doesn't matter if it's big or small, you just have to kill 5 dudes to charge that Soul Cube. This whole section of Doom is just as good as the beginning. You get all your weapons, except the BFG, and you just kill whatever is in your way. Hell is here, and you're the cure. Remember the Sarge who was helping you earlier? Yeah, well, he's the enemy and he wants to kill you. Was he possessed from the get-go, or did he get unlucky while you were in Hell? Just remember to charge a soul cube before you see him because, well, this is actually a very hard boss fight, but when you have the soul cube, fuck it's so easy. But there's another thing, he has a BFG, and you don't. Once you're done with him, it's time to make your way to the caverns. You'll have all your weapons back at this point. This is just a playground of mass destruction now. You have a lot of ammo for every weapon now. The game throws everything it's got at you. Remember the first boss fight? Well now there's two of these bitches and you can kick their ass to hell again. They're really trying, but they don't know that you're the Doom guy. Alright, now you are here, the final level. Here's a bunch of ammo. You'll definitely be needing that for this boss. Now go to this area and get a secret PDA with some nice messages to you and enter the arena. Oh nice, it's a Simon Demon. I can't wait to rocket duel this bitch to hell. No, not at all. Actually, you can only use the Soul Cube on him. Three hits, I think, and he's gone. The Soul Cube seals hell forever. But once this game is done, you can rock out to the credits and go play the sequel Resurrection of Hell. So happy fucking birthday to Doom 3. You did well in my eyes and I'll play you again sometime soon. Alright, see ya. And good night.